Hey, revolutionary greetings, comrades. Today is the 25th of October, 2022. It is the day that Sadak leadership resolved to adopt this day as the anti-sanctions day, focusing on the sanctions imposed by the United States of America and her friends to the political leadership in Zimbabwe. We have said before, and we say it now, that we are opposed to sanctions, any form of sanctions for that matter, and that we call for the lifting of these sanctions with no conditions attached. In other words, the sanctions must be removed unconditionally. And as the Zimbabwe Communist Party was saying sanctions must go, ZANU PF must go. And we are explaining, I am Mabuto Nicholas Mapena, General Secretary of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Why do we say sanctions must go? Briefly, sanctions by the Americans and the British demand that black farmers move back to marginal land. And we're saying there must never be any reversal to the land reform, even though it was chaotic. The only reversal that should happen is that an op a proper audit must be done. And the political elite who grabbed more than one farm should share those farms with, with the rest of the people of Zimbabwe. In other words, those farms must be withdrawn from them. Two, sanctions mean that Zimbabwe cannot obtain loans from international banks and that Zimbabwean companies cannot trade with the West. In the previous video, we discussed this there. Because uh, there are some who will say, no, these are targeted sanctions. They only read Section 6 of, of ZDR and they leave out the uh, first five sections of ZDR. Because Section 6 of ZDR then speaks to or names individuals. This is where they then focus on Section 6 to say these are targeted sanctions. If you check the video that you recorded, we read the entire document, the 2001 Zetera document. We are here to discuss the later version, which was then amended. Three, sanctions imposed by other countries undermine the national sovereignty of Zimbabwe. <coughs> Four, Sanctions affect ordinary people more than the elite. It is the people that suffer through these sanctions. Sanctions are a political tool in the hands of San PF that it uses as an excuse in failing to rebuild our economy. And we have dealt with the, the causes of our economic failure. We abandoned national planning and embraced neoliberalism. Five, sanctions provide an excuse for the ZANPF regime to cover up for its looting and its failures, as I've already indicated. For these and other reasons, sanctions must be poor. And indeed, ZANU-PF must go. Why must ZANU-PF go? ZANU-PF is the part of the looting class. For this reason, it has to go. Two, they have destroyed our economy instead of building it. Hence, we have thousands, if not millions of Zimbabweans in foreign lands 
because they have destroyed the economy through liberal policies, nepotism, corruption, mismanagement. Three, they steal our mineral resources and build machines and buy luxury cars. You look in Cuba, the political leadership in Cuba, it lives a modest lifestyle. There is no leader in Cuba that builds mansions or drives expensive vehicles under an economic embargo imposed by the Americans almost six decades ago. But in Zimbabwe it's a different story. Hence, ZANPF must go. They promote money changers or spartan by looting the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. When you get to the port of entry in Zimbabwe, will be met with people selling money. And these are runners for the political elite who are looting the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Five, they adapt, beat, torture, and they kill union leaders, political leaders, and even ordinary workers who dare to demand a living wage. We have comrades from a Triple C wine prison, job scala, honorable stole. We have the MRP9 wine prison. That's what Zan PF is known for. To jail, to torture, and to kill those that hold a different view from them. Honorable Tofa from Bulawayo is in hospital was brutalized by ZANPF youth. Vehicles of members of a triple C in Madopo constituents when they're campaigning for a by-election in a ward were destroyed, damaged. People were beaten up. That's what they know. They must go. ZANPF must go. They, six, they spend millions of United States dollars in hiring just to travel to foreign lands <coughs> with huge delegations. So on this day, on the 25th of October, our message is simple, that sanctions and the ZANU-PF must go. We do not support the impositions or the continued imposition of sanctions in Zimbabwe. We do not support ZANU-PF to remain in office. So we must, all of us, mobilize our society to reject sanctions imposed by imperialist forces and to reject ZANU-PF. Not only ZANU-PF, but ZANUism as a political ideology. We must reject it. As a revolutionary, revolutionaries, and as progressive Zimbabweans. We must reject ZANUism. We must reject ZANU-PF. We must reject the sanctions imposed by imperialist forces in our country. Zadak has released a statement I will read this statement. Uh, it's dated 25th October 2022. Statement, statement by His Excellency Felix Antonio Chisegeti Chilombo, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Chairperson of SATAC, calling for the lifting of all sanctions imposed on the Republic of Zimbabwe. One, once again, the Southern African Development Community SATAC reaffirms its solidarity with the government and people of the Republic of Zimbabwe and retaliates the calls for the unconditional and immediate lifting of sanctions that were imposed on Zimbabwean individuals and institutions. Two, SATAC is deeply concerned at the claim that the sanctions are of a targeted nature and are aimed at unilaterally punishing few in a few individuals. The reality is that there is a spillover and contagion effect on the rest of the country, in particular by imposing a blanket negative 
perception about Zimbabwe across the world, in particular in the sensitive global financial, financial markets. Three, this percep perception results in the country being unable to attract much needed foreign direct investment, lines of credit, and other financial services that are essential to the socio-economic development of the country. This is more concerning given the need for rapid global recovery from at least two years of the social and economically crippled COVID-19 across the world. Zimbabwe, like most developing countries, is particularly vulnerable to these trends and the unilateral sanctions worsen the plight of the economy. Four, SATAC is committed to the consolidation of democracy in Southern Africa and indeed elsewhere in the world. Zimbabwe is expected to hold regular national elections in May 2023. In this context, SATAC appeals to those who have imposed the sanctions on Zimbabwe to give space to the citizens of the country to exercise their democratic rights and not to use sanctions as a covert mechanism to effect the regime change. Five, SATAC is also committed to the spirit of multi. Sorry, I will repeat five. SATAC is also committed to the spirit of multilateralism in this regard. Not that sanctions imposed against a few nations in the family of humanity must be made in accordance with the international law. In this context, SATAC welcomes the report of the Special Rapporteur on the negative impact of unilateral coercive measures on the enjoyment of human rights. Alan Duhan, on her visit to Zimbabwe, which recommended lifting unilateral sanctions in line with the principles of international law. 6. SATAC fully supports the conclusion of the Special Rapporteur that sanctions, including secondary sanctions, in a different from forms of overcompliance by foreign banks and companies have had a significant impact on the population and the government, exacerbating pre-existing economic and humanitarian challenges. Close quote. That's the statement from the SATAC. We agree with most of the issues that uh, the statement is raising. But you are saying SATAC must ensure that Zimbabwe holds elections in line with SATAC protocols on elections. SATAC must ensure that the public meeting is available to everyone in Zimbabwe. SATAC must insist on the implementation of its own recommendations it made in 2018 when it sent an observer team to observe the elections that uh, the military, the police should stay away from the elections. Otherwise, we support the entire statement of SATAC that sanctions must be lifted. And we are saying ZANU-PF must also go alongside the sanctions. And we have stated the reasons why ZANU-PF must go. And we have stated the reasons why we will not stand in one corner with imperialist forces and upload them for imposing sanctions on Zimbabwe. No. And we refuse to stand on one corner with the ZANPF when it brutalizes the people, committing atrocities, destroying the economy. We refuse. We are engaged, engaged in a dual struggle. So we can't stand with imperialists and we can't stand with ZANPF. Sanctions and the ZANU PF must go. Please write your comments in this comment section. Please circulate this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, I'm Angel Comrades.